What's going on guys and gals? Chris with the Body Damn Channel. Welcome. I'm going to do a little live, almost like accessory type shoulder kind of workout thing today. And it uh, shouldn't take very long. Anyways, if you're watching this live, feel free to comment or ask a question. The two things I kind of want to go over today are shoulder aesthetics and also uh, it's bulking season. Like what am I doing to bulk? Uh, should you be bulking? That kind of stuff. So anyways, Welcome to my channel. My name is Chris, um, and you can subscribe if you want to. Uh, but here today, we're definitely talking about aesthetics and bulking, and uh, we're sitting here in my garage gym. So I'm going to get warmed up to do accessory type shoulders. I've done my primary workout today, and uh, you know, many people might be asking, like, well, what is accessory type stuff? That's basically everything outside of like the main, main uh, hard shoulder pressing movements and stuff like that. It's all the lateral raising and front raising and all that kind of stuff. And I'll kind of give you guys some pointers on you know, how you can kind of do this and start to get more aesthetically amazing shoulders. And then uh, we'll also cap it off with some bulking information on like how you can bulk and what's the right way to bulk, uh, you know, maybe considering your body type or something like that. Anyways, it's good to see everyone. Don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to get right into kind of warming myself up. I haven't warmed myself up yet. So I'm going to do a couple things to get my shoulders warmed up. One of the very first things that you should do, we're gonna do about three, maybe 15 second hangs. And these are, gonna be, these are gonna be dead hangs to where we are gonna let our shoulders really, really, really rise up. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in one second. But anyways, we wanna get our shoulders warmed up, even for accessory movements. The shoulder joint is so important in your body. It controls so many different things. If you have shoulder pain, Adios, awesome bench pressing. Adios, tricep movements. A lot of times you have to do all kinds of weird workarounds and sometimes adios, bicep movements because it's going to start hurting a whole lot. So you definitely want to warm up your shoulders a whole bunch before any upper body kind of workout. So I'm going to do a pretty okay, uh, you know, warm up right here. The very first thing is a dead hang, right? We're just going to sit here and we're going to hang. And then I'm really going to want to get my neck to just sink into my shoulder blades. I want to get my shoulders like as close to my ears as possible. I want to get about 15 seconds to maybe 30 seconds, something like that. But I really want to just let my arms and everything just stretch all the way out. I want all the blood to go into that area of my body and be ready, even for accessory movements. So I'm just going to sit here and hang for a little bit. And we're going to do this twice over. And you really want to hang. You don't want to sit there and go wide and be propped up a little bit because that's just back, right? You want to go like this, shoulder width apart, and just hang all the way down. You know, if you are thinking about your knees, like getting as long as possible, your body is stretching all the way out, that's what you want to do. Your shoulders should be really close to your ears if you do this correctly. Okay, so that's like the first thing I want to do real quick. Good to see everyone. <laughs> What's up, Rakin? Good to see you. And uh, before we go into the second thing, um, the bulking thing, right? We'll kind of shed a little bit on that. The leanest I was in the summer was around 9% body fat, 186.5 pounds. I'm 192 now, doing a slow bulk for probably another month or so. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what it's kind of looking like right now. I'm 192. I kind of want to get to 194, maybe 195. Uh, the most successful bulk I ever had, but I didn't really enjoy it, was when I got up to 208, which was like two years ago. And when I say I didn't really enjoy it, it was just like huffing, puffing around a whole bunch. My uh, cardio capacity just was greatly diminished. So I think. The bigger you want to get, the more things you're going to have to start sacrificing in your life, you know, like maybe some of the fun stuff. And for me, I like the most fun stuff to me is the stuff that's outside of the gym, right? Uh, mountain biking, surfing, snowboarding, all that kind of stuff is really where I get my kicks. But, you know, when that starts to suffer, that kind of sucks. So anyways, I'm not going to get up to 208. Um, I might try for 200. We'll see. But I think I'd be happy at 195, a solid good bulk, and then whittle it down to about 186 next year, something like that. 9% body fat. It was really, really fun being that, but uh, sometimes it's just time to bulk, you know? All right, let's get this next set going. A dead hang right here. I'm just gonna hang as much as I can, stretch my body out, probably get 15 seconds right here. And then we'll go into a really quick uh, rotator cuff kind of warm up movement that you can do uh, before you do any upper body kind of things. I'll show you that here in a second too. So definitely stretch yourself out all the way hanging therapy they call it hanging therapy hanging shoulder therapy those are common terms that you can google to find out you know all this hanging stuff but really really helpful for you if you're looking at being aesthetic um, and being in shape for the long term okay so that's really really important <clears throat> all right 
So let's go into, you know, I'm going to grab a, a, some 10s real quick. And these are really light, but for a purpose, if I'm at the gym and I'm about to do a smash a really crazy workout, I do a lot more. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep our arms bent at 90 degrees. And we're just going to do these, okay? It's going to get some blood in that rotator cuff area. Get about 15 of them, 10, 15, something like that. And we're really just trying to put blood in that area. And uh, apparently, you know, if you do this religiously, like these movements, you could put on 5, 10% on your bench press, that kind of stuff. I was doing this a lot in college. Now I do a lot of band therapy and stuff like that. But for today's workout, I think this will be suffice. All right. So you want to do those. And you really don't want to, like, let go of that 90-degree bend, okay? So we want to be 90 degrees all the way out, bring it in all the way up, okay? So really, really important. All right. So I did those real quick. Um, I'm going to get much lighter weights now, and I'm going to do these. <clears throat> you see, sometimes I see people in the gym doing these. So we're going to go up like this and down. All right. And you want to keep your elbows high in line with your body like that. 10 or 15 reps, just getting the shoulder joint warmed up just like that. All right. Pretty good. And then the other one that I like to do is I like to go like this, go down, tilt my body forward, and then go this way as much as I can, and then come up. This way, come up. I like to do those. It's almost like a, a quarter movement, but I like these a lot too. You don't see very many people doing these, but uh, you can do them a lot more effectively on a chair or something like that, but or on a bench, but I'll just do them right here. Okay. Good enough. So I think there's enough blood in my shoulders. And uh, we're going to get some weights going on here. All right. So shoulder aesthetics 101. Uh, one of those, you kind of want to lead your shoulder workout with some sort of a pressing movement, whether it be overhead press, military press, all that kind of stuff, Arnold press. Today I did reverse press where I sit in a 90 degree bench and I come right here. And then I reverse my hands. See, this is the typical way you do shoulder pressing, but I reverse my hands and I go up like that. Okay. Squeezing my shoulder blades at the top, come down. All right. So if I'm sitting on a bench, kind of act like I'm sitting, I'm going to press up, squeeze the shoulders together and come down real slow like that. All right. So that's the pressing movement I was doing today. I did some lateral raises as well. And today we're going to do some lateral raises here because that's definitely, you know, shoulder genetics, not genetics, but Shoulder Aesthetics 101. <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of cold in this garage, so it's hard to breathe. Anyways, and I'm bulking a little bit, so it always gets a little bit harder to breathe when you bulk, um, or slightly harder. So, um, yeah, Shoulder Genetics 101. You might have tiny shoulders. I find that there's certain things that uh, can build big shoulders that are just natural movements. Throwing footballs, right? Uh, swimming, right? You can bring you some broader shoulders, things like that. Um, as a young kid, I was a swimmer, so I think my frame got a little bit wider than normal than if I hadn't been a swimmer, if I just sit at home and play video games all day. So, you know, you want to be thinking pressing movements to get the meat on the shoulder, but you still got to carve the meat that's around the shoulder, okay? And so that's what these lateral raises are for and front raises and all that kind of stuff is once you get the bulk in that area to get the nice rounded deltoids and things like that, you're gonna to want to do lateral raises and um, various other raises. Today, we're gonna to be doing two raises. We might get you a couple variations in this, but uh, all right, the very first one's a simple lateral raise. So the way I like to do this, all right, I like to bring it up a little bit, get my arm bent a little bit, then I'm gonna come out in front of me and I'm gonna to try to get my shoulders, I'm gonna really think about my shoulders going up and squeezing as high as they can go, okay? So like right here, one, I'm just going to do like eight of them, two, and I'm going to rotate to the side so you can see what's going on. The lighting is not the greatest in this garage, but trust me, it's definitely hitting the side deltoid, aka the lateral deltoid. On this movement, I'm also dead wristing, as you can see right here, instead of, uh, you know, strict wristing like this. So I'm going to do a dead wrist as I go up and come down so I can put all the effort on the lateral deltoid. All right. A couple more. And you can see that I go up relatively fast and I'm coming down pretty slow, and that's good. You want to control the weight 
and get the power of what's called the negative. So there we go. All right. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do today. I'm going to do a couple of sets of that. I'm going to answer some questions here. Uh, Darren Eckelman, if you bulk, do you lose your six pack? Pretty. I mean, look, I'm bulking right now. If I flex hard, still a six pack, but I'm naturally a pretty lean guy. Um, <clears throat> will you lose your six pack? Most people lose a little bit. Yeah. It'll just kind of, I mean, it depends on where you store most of your fat, but the majority of males are going to store it here. I think the front part of the thigh and uh, right around the side part, oh, AKA the love handles, right? So, and I noticed that when I start getting that 200 range, 208 love handles are going to start coming out. And it's pretty obvious right now. I'm still pretty lean. feels pretty good. Um, what's up, Luis says, what's up, Chris? Good to see you. Leave a comment. We have seven viewers in the house. Comment. If you have questions regarding shoulders or something like that, let me know. Uh, Darren Eckelman, I want better flexibility. <clears throat> you know, a lot of good flexibility comes with HIIT workouts, surprisingly enough. Um, Darren says, I'm 315, six foot eight, but implementing better choices such as drinking mostly water, quick Cokes. One of the best things that you can do, all right, if you want to lose some weight, here are two things I can give you right now. I mean, obviously increase your water intake. That's really smart. But here's the two things I want you to do. One, eliminate all sugars. I'm talking all of them. Every single one, pay attention to your labels, eliminate all your sugar, okay? The second thing I want you to do is eliminate stupid snacking, all right? Instead of snacking, have real dedicated larger meals um, and quit snacking. If you do larger meals successfully, you won't even want to snack, all right? But snacking gets a lot of people in trouble, whether it be chips and guacamole or you know celery and peanut butter. Like Even if it's healthy, if you are always doing it, it's just adding more and more calories that you are probably not burning, hence you're getting fatter, right? So really cut back on the snacking and aim for really good nutritious meals. So that's really important. Eliminate sugars and quit snacking, it's <laughs> so important. All right, let's get the second set. We're gonna get this one up here. Since today is more of a strict day for me, I'm using much lighter weight. And strict meaning like, you know, if I wanna, I don't know, if it's a heavy day, you'll see me bouncing a little bit more or something like that. But today, it's a more strict kind of day. Don't forget to hit the like button, by the way. Cause uh, yeah, you don't see very many live workouts on YouTube, so. You know, maybe we can start something new here. So I'm going up, coming down. Now I'm not completely to my side, right? I'm probably a foot away from my body. Actually way more than a foot. It looks like almost a yard. So I'm going out, you know? I'm dead wristing it, getting all that emphasis on the lateral deltoid, right? It's really important to control, all right? Get as high as you can, squeeze and come down. Now there's some variations and I'll show you on the next set what that will look like that I'm gonna do a little bit of. But here's about eight or nine, so that's good. All right, feel pretty good about that. Like I said, I already had my primary workout today, so this is just bonus at this point. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about bulking. Since we were on the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The topic of, actually, sorry. If we were on the topic of snacking and like bad food choices and a lot of sugar, right? Um, let's talk about bulking because bulking is kind of like, well, are you clean bulking? Are you dirty bulking? This really depends on your metabolism. You can kind of tell if you're mesomorph, ectomorph, endomorph, just look it up on Google, figure out what kind of body type you are. It kind of gives you a rough estimate of how your metabolism is in your body, right? Really high metabolism people or people with very high metabolism <laughs> have to eat a lot more, a lot of times dirty bulking to even gain some weight on their body, right? Whereas people that store fat pretty easily on their body, and have trouble losing weight would probably want to consider maybe not even bulking at all. But anyways, let's talk about people that are new into lifting weights. They want to get some, you know, good size on them. So yeah, you want to incorporate smart lifts, bench press, bent over barbell row, squat, deadlift, and overhead press. And you want to eat in a surplus, right? So you can make sure that your muscles have all the nutrients and proteins that they need and they're not starving for anything, that your muscle glycogen is definitely always there. Um, that you're not uh, pulling from the actual muscle itself, that you're actually um, adequately giving it the power that it needs when it's through the movements that it's going to be doing. So the question becomes, on a bulk, what does your bulk plan look like? Well, mine is just almost, uh, I'm trying to get, a, I'm sorry, about a gram to a gram and a half of protein per pound of body weight. Okay, so I'm 192, you can do the math. That means I'm right around 
you know, I'm over 200 pounds in protein a day, whether I come from powdery sources, which is the minimal amount. You want to get that to be very small. But I try to do a lot of meats and eggs and fish and things like that. Um, that's where I want to get my protein from a majority of the time. So think about that. So that's bare minimum if you're bulking. And even if you want to retain some pretty good muscle on your body, 1 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight, not kilogram, but pound. Or um, if you're into more of a surplus, then maybe closer to 1.5. So that's something that can, you have to consider. After that, I try to make it 50-50 with the fats and the carbohydrates, where a lot of people would probably go 70% on, on the leftover with carbs and 30% fat. I kind of do different. And if you look at research, you know, there's a lot of good research out there showing that you know, higher fat diets are much better than higher carb diets. But it all, it's all, it all depends on where you look on the internet, okay? But I've been trying the high fat diet versus the high carb diet. And I can definitely tell that the bulk is different, okay? And that I am definitely, how do I say? I'm definitely more cut through the bulk, which is really weird. So this is the first year where I've actually done a lot more fat than normal. And uh, I have seen profound differences with everything else being constant. I've seen some pretty profound differences in my body. So that's to be considered. Do your own research, check it out. Um, but yeah, when I bulk, I am eating three to four times a day, pretty big meals that are close to 800 or plus calories, something like that. And if I'm doing any kind of writing or any kind of, you know, cardio during the day, that's extensive, you know, an hour or two hours or something like that, I'm accounting for that. And I'm making sure that I eat heavy foods. And sometimes once or twice a week, actually more than that, I'll be having pizza, hamburgers, barbecue, something like that, something with a lot of calories, you know? So do your own research, but that's how I do it right now. Here's a question from Nick. How long are your workouts? How long do you rest? My, my workouts right now, today's workout was like an hour. Yesterday's workout, or actually didn't work out yesterday. Monday's workout was about an hour and 30 minutes. Tuesday's is in about an hour. So I typically work out uh, five hours a week. That's not much. That's not much to ask for to start really curbing your life around, right? You know, five hours a week is not much. I think everyone's got that. Everyone has it. All right, let's go for the next set. I'm going to do a little bit of a variation here. That variation is when I get to the top, I'm going to act like these are water jugs. You've probably heard this before. And I'm going to tilt this part down as I come down. Okay. Just like that. So here we go. Up, tilt, down. Lots of emphasis on the lateral deltoid. Here, ask more questions. We've got 12 viewers in the house. I want to see 12 people talking in the feed. Go for it. So yeah, I definitely need to bulk a little bit more to where my abs don't show or something like that. That's when I know I'm really putting on some weight. And it's all good. You know, it's the winter season here in the USA for most states. That means it gets colder and uh, it's not summer anymore, right? <clears throat> so pretty cool. There's also another thing I've been doing. It's my second week of it, but I've been doing what's called a reset. And resets are really uh, interesting. So it's probably the first time in my life where I've, you know, really planned out a prolonged reset, which is doing a lot of negatives and getting my form back to you know, real, real super amazing form. So anyway, something that, uh, you know, I do it every now and then. It's just, I have a real big plan that's going to be very prolonged on this reset as opposed to, you know, resetting for weeks at a time or four weeks at a time. I got many months at a time on this reset plan. So anyways, uh, any more questions? Let me see. And then we'll go into another variation. <clears throat> so that's the last thing I'm going to be doing with those. I'm going to do a uh, static hold. I'm going to get 235s out, 235 pound dumbbells. There they are. I'll put my 15s back. The thing about lateral raises is you don't want to use a lot of weight. The more weight you lose, use with lateral raises, the more bending down and momentum you have to get and everything. And then you could argue that very little is going to the lateral deltoid at that point. So you want to really focus on lighter weights and especially with the rear deltoid, anything you do with the rear deltoid has to be super, super light for the most part. Um, unless you're doing cable pulls, face pulls, things like that. Okay. <laughs> um, Nick says, I'm trying to get started, but my workout seems to last 90 to 120 minutes. Any suggestions to cut it down? Yeah. Pay attention to your times. And um, there's a possibility that your exercise selection is uh, not optimized 
And there's also a high possibility that maybe you're going in five or six times a week where you can get great results for four times a week. I've been on a four day workout for quite a while, you know, and um, lots of recuperation, lots of CNS recuperation, central nervous system recuperation. And I look like this, which I think most people could say, that's not too bad of a look, right? That's four days working out, but it's also many years of my body in the gym, understanding movements, I mean, two decades plus. So that has to be considered too, you know? Um, if you're ever considering working out or starting to work out, or you watch this video and you're getting pumped up, you're like, damn, I wanna kinda do that, I wanna look like that, start now. Even if you do it 80% correctly or 70% correctly, it's the muscle memory, it's the CNS getting trained, it's all these things coming together for the final product, right? This month, this month, I turned 40 years old, all right? And I think this is a pretty good look for 40 years old. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but every time I meet people from my college days or even 10 years ago days, and I see them today, they all look so different. They let, the, they let it go. They never stayed in the gym. They drank too much, party too much. You know, life got in the way, whatever, whatever that excuse is. And quite honestly, I just, I stuck with it. You know, I stuck with it because I know how important it was for me. So anyways, you know, just something to consider. We got a question right here. Ronald Swartz, hey man, what's up? I hit a plateau, so I need to switch up my routine. Any suggestions? Ronald, in order for me to answer that question, I need more specifics. Like what like exercise, like what what exercise are you stumped on? Is it bench press? Is it bent over barbell row? So it could be that you have a um, how do I say it? You're not doing the right kind of set kind of thing. So how do I say it? Um yeah, you have to get periodization, and I guess that's how you say it, and you have to basically beat yourself almost every time that you're in the gym. But once you reach a plateau, it means two things. Maybe your rep, rep range and your variation isn't there, or it's time for an exercise selection or different exercise. So something to consider. So if you're plateauing on bench press, for example, at a five by five of 225, you know, then it might be important on your next week to go, let's say you're having trouble with a five by five to 225. So what I would do is I would do four sets of like four the next week at like 230. And then I would go five sets of four, I mean, four sets of five week two at 230. And then four sets of six week three at 230. And then at that point, only at that point can you move up again right? And then you can go back down to four by fours and then break through the plateau. It's hard to break through the plateau. And sometimes it is nutrition based as well. Like if you are under, um, if you're in a deficit, much harder to break, break through a plateau, really, really hard. Uh, if you're in a caloric surplus, it's a little bit easier. So um, yeah, there's a lot of answers. That, you know, I wouldn't say there's a lot of answers to that question, but there definitely needs to be some clarification in order to get a really good response. But a lot of times it comes down to exercise selection or it comes down to how you are programming uh, the sets, right? If you're always just doing, you know, eight, six, five, threes, uh, sorry. I mean, yeah, eight, six, five, threes or three, five, six, eights or five by fives might be time to go to like a four by four or a four by five and then a four by six and then back down to a four by four, four by five, four by six. So it just all depends. But yeah, more specific, uh, be more specific and maybe I can help you out. Um, John Martinez, what's a good exercise to grow your shoulders fast? Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Like the standing overhead press is like the best one. But that'll get you good bulk on your shoulders if you want to get, um, yeah, that's going to get you the most bulk on your shoulders. For the bang, for the buck, that with a surplus is going to just blow you up. Um, Nick says, thanks. All right, so I'm going to do now another variation of a lateral raise, except this is going to be a static hold, a.k.a. isometric. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, basically get two dumbbells that are much heavier. I'm gonna get them to my side and I'm gonna bring them out to here, okay? I'm gonna bring them about, let's say six to eight inches away from your body, from your pocket line, and hold it there, all right? And hold it, not out like this, and not out like that behind you, but just directly to your sides. All right, that's, that's the weird thing. I'm gonna try to do that for about 10 to 15 seconds. Here we go. It's gonna look kind of goofy, but who cares? So just this right here, isometric holding, you might be like, that looks pretty easy. Trust me, it is absolutely not. And this is, you know, I call them holds. But they're isometric movements. Let's be let's be honest. 
this stuff will kill you. Oh, it's so hard to keep it out there. Ugh, okay, so that's set one. And uh, yeah, if you want to get more, how do I say it? If you want to get more blood in that area, then flex the area. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger principle. Flex the area. Oh, God, try to get all the blood in that one region, you know? So it's kind of goofy, but between your sets, massaging, you know, things like that, maybe get a tennis ball, put it up against the wall, get your shoulder up against that tennis ball, move it around, that kind of stuff. Very, very important stuff. If you want to build some awesome shoulders, you have to do things like that. So, you know, sitting out there, and I don't even know how to flex correctly, but, you know, I know that since this is built up pretty good, that there's definitely blood in that area. So I want to do that. Hold it. Oh, man. You want to keep that blood in that area as much as you can. And uh, this kind of goes, it's kind of an interesting facet, but sometimes people tend to do things in between their sets, like run, push-ups, random stuff. And while it's okay to get lean quick, it's not okay if you really want to emphasize building muscle because now you're throwing your, your blood from, you know, this part of your body up here. Now it's going all over the place, right? And by the time you're ready for your next set of lateral raises, now the blood has to go from everywhere else and get back in that one region. You know, <clears throat> keep the region that you're working out, uh, you know, emphasized when it comes to blood circulation. Very important. So, yeah. All right, next set. Like it looks like I got a message on Instagram. You can find me there. Bod damn Instagram. I sent you a message in IG. Cool. I'll look at it. See if I can respond to you. Yeah, hit me up with all your workout questions. And uh, hell, if you're in the gym and you just want to be pumped up, just say bod damn shit. Make sure you put that on Instagram and send me a private message. I don't care. All right. This is hard. So six to inches, six to eight inches away. Oh. Oh, the emphasis right on my lateral deltoid. Completely different kind of workout. You will probably never see people in the gym doing this. Ugh, okay. I'm going to go for one more set of that. Whew. Anyways, now back to my normal point, my original point, you know, in between sets and stuff like that, is it okay to do supersets? Yeah, sure, it is. But only if you do it with the same kind of area of the body. So superset to this, you know, could be... Rear deltoid flies. Hell, I don't know. Like, just keep it in the same general area. So your blood's just going from here to like back here, you know? So something to consider. I was going to do some supersets with front raises, but I'll just do them as their own set. All right. Any more questions? Eight viewers in the, eight viewers in the house? Let me know. Whew. Curious to see what I will look like when I'm 186 or 187. I don't know. You know, by the time people get my age, it's you'd be happy with one to three pounds of lean muscle on your body a year. So think about that for a second. I mean, it's like, you gotta have the right programming as you get older. And it's really easy as you're younger, especially if you go black market or something crazy like that. And you go into the SARMs or the ROIDs or something crazy. It's easy to put <clears throat> 10 to 20 to 30 pounds of muscle on your body if you want to. But then again, you're also chancing a lot of weird health things down the road, which I never decided to take that route. Um, so I took the more natural route and I think it's paid off. I've learned a lot of valuable lessons. Um, everybody that I've known that has uh, taken the other route either is not in the game anymore or they're just like, it's not worth it. As they got older, they got smarter and wiser and they're like, it's just not worth it. So something to consider as well. Um, but if you're gonna do it the natural way, then I would definitely give your body a lot of time to recuperate. People that are doing the black market stuff and you know, SARMs and all that kind of poor hormones, I mean, your recovery times are much faster and tighter. So you can do six days a week in the gym. If you want to be a gym rat, that's great. I don't want to be one. So that's the reason why I only put in five hours a week as of right now. And I think five hours a week is good for a physique like this. In fact, the physique like this, every most people could argue that this is coming into play and it's a pretty popular kind of physique now, like aesthetic fitness, as opposed to being a mass monster and full of you know all kinds of pills and drugs in you. You pick whichever way you guys want to go, right? But if you're going to watch this channel, I'm going to show you guys how to do it the right way. Whereas it's the only way that I know about it. And this is the way where, you know, you can't just sit back and you got to earn your way through. So nothing's going to help me in the gym. There's no, I've actually gotten close to the point actually now where I don't even use pre-workouts because I'm actually fasting in the morning. So, you know, these are all things that I hope you guys can research more behind the scenes. And if you get perked up by something and you go, that sounds interesting. I didn't consider that. Do some research behind the scenes, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I'll just tell you all the secrets 
you know, as you guys want them. Last set. All right, this is it. Here we go. I'm gonna bring it out just like that. More questions, eight viewers in the house. I know you're watching, so go ahead and ask a question. See if I can answer it for you. I always think there's no better way to get something answered than someone that's done it before, that has done failure, you know, it's been through the failures and been through all the, the this and that. I think in my entire weightlifting career, I've been injured um, because of the weights. Uh, I think once, like one real true injury because of the weights, because of other things like mountain biking, snowboarding. Yeah, I've had injuries through all those sports. So I got, I've gotten injured with more cardio based things. All right, that's enough of that. So I'm gonna put these up. But yeah, when it comes to the gym, you don't wanna be injured. Cause that'll definitely disrupt your gains completely. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Great question from John Martinez. Is it better to do one part of the body or two on the same day? I think it's better to do push and pull routines. So on one day you're gonna do chest, shoulders, uh, sorry, chest, shoulders, triceps, and quads. And then the next day, you're going to mess with pull muscles, back, biceps, hamstrings, forearms, things like that. Um, rest, and then repeat. Um, Nick, opinion on Smith Machine. Is it, even if it's your only option, Smith Machines are great. Um, Smith, Smith Machines are good, especially if you like a spotter, less workout, which I definitely, definitely encourage. I don't like having spotters in my workouts, even though that might change, you know, as people view this channel, I'm pretty sure some people will start working out with me and stuff in the gyms and spotter might be there when I want one. I don't know. Um, but Smith machines are the machines where they travel on rails up and down. They have like a million different hooks on each side. So you can stack them with all these weights. You can get under them, do squats, you know, lunges, uh, bench press, bent over barbell rows, all that kind of stuff. And if ever in the movement, you feel as if you're compromising your form or you can't do the next rep or something like that. You just hook it back onto the hooks and out you go. So I like those a lot. If you have limitations with free moving weights, okay. Meaning bench presses and dumbbells and all that kind of stuff. Another machine I like to do is anything hammer strength based. And those are in just about every gym across America. Hammer machines travel on one singular plane typically. As long as you line up the chair correctly or things like that or whatever is the adjustable thing, then you can typically get a good, nice workout with those two. And you can stack those with weights as well. So, um, yeah, Smith machines are good. Don't forget hammer strength machines. Those are amazing as well. If you don't want to have free weights, um, you know, things like that. <laughs> Um, we have Arnest in the chat. What's up, Arnest? Good to see you. He says, great. Thank you. Um, okay. So Ronald says, I'm dropping 48 pounds and training for five OCR next year. Um, is that some sort of race? Let me know. OCR. Let me know what that is. Um, John Martinez says, thanks. Okay. Now we're going to go into uh, some front raises, which I'm going to do with some very light dumbbells, and you'll see why. This is shoulder aesthetics, man. This is what we're here for. We're doing some shoulder gains, and... Today is my light push day. So anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna be doing it with 10 pounders. I probably would have picked 12 and a half so at the gym, but here we go. All right, I don't usually do front raises, but I'm gonna do them today anyways. I'm gonna try to do some double workouts on majority of my days and hopefully some of these will be live. And these double workouts will be an extra time usually in the evening or the afternoon where it's like 10 minutes or something like that for accessory type stuff. All right, so on a, Front raise, there's so many different ways to do this, all right? You see people doing it like hammer style, like this, and they go up like that, and that's great. See, the problem is this light is like not the greatest. So I wanna go up there, but I also wanna see the separation of the shoulder. A lot of times that requires a tiny bit of a bend forward, and then go up like this, and you have to kind of cross your face like that, okay? So if I do that correctly, I'm gonna see if I can get some better light. Let me see here. If I do it correctly, then the shoulder should kind of pop, you know, the actual front deltoid you'll see it being emphasized. It's really hard to do it on this line. But anyways, so as I go up, you can kind of see it happening right there. See how it like separates? So that's what I'm looking for in the gym mirror. If you have a tank top, shame on you. You should always work out. I mean, if you have a tank, if you don't have a tank top, shame on you. You should always wear a tank top. So you can see these things happening, okay? So I'm going up and instead of being straight out, all right, where you see like the separation's not right quite there, I'm gonna go to the side. And I can really bunch up 
the front delt by doing that, all right? Light weights, nothing crazy. Now, if this is going to be on your heavy day, you're going to go heavier. You might incorporate some swaying, right? But I'm coming to a dead stop on each rep. Some people would go front like this. Some people take a disc and they do, you know, disc raises. But I like this way because when you have a disc, you can't get that crossing motion, right? But the crossing motion is key to getting the front deltoid from the most lengthened position, which is here, to the most crunched position. Think about it. Here, I'm going to drop these weights for a second. So here's the most lengthened position. That's basically what working out comes down to. It's getting something lengthened all the way out and then squeezing it all the way up. Bench pressing, right? Gets me to a pretty shortened position. However, if I do a cable fly from a lengthened position and I cross in front of me, right? Look how much more shortened this muscle gets, right? It's getting from a long state to a very tight, compact state. So think about that when we're dealing with this front deltoid, all right? And that, here's the front deltoid in its most relaxed state, lengthened. And we're gonna go up and right about here, if I put my arm here, right? It's contracted, but it's not optimized, right? Now, if I go from here to here and up a little bit more, now we're talking, I mean, you can kind of see, you can just see it bunching up right there. Whereas here, it's not quite doing that as much, see? Now, if I go here, right, take my hair out of the way. I mean, look at look at the separation right there. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm doing these raises. And I'm looking to go up and bunch that muscle together to where it's completely tight. And you won't get that with a disc raise or anything like that. Um, you won't get it by going at the same rate because you can't crisscross. So important thing to note is to crisscross when you're doing front raises. Now, the reason why I don't do too many front raises is because a lot of the things that I do, my exercise selection for a lot of chest things already, you know, works out my front deltoid a considerable amount, right? So, you know, it's definitely one of the last things to worry about <laughs> when it comes to getting aesthetic shoulders because the bench press works out your front deltoid considerably, you know. Uh, any kind of overhead pressing typically does it, whether it's with dumbbells or with barbells. So nice and controlled. Get that squeeze in there, fully lengthened state to a fully compact state, boom. You know, a lot of people think it's just hours in the gym to get a good lean body. It's freaking false, it's completely false. Five hours of gym, that's what I'm doing right now. Five hours a week in the gym is what I'm at right now. Five hours. Um, cool. Ronald Schwartz saying, he's dropping at 48 pounds and training for the five. Okay, cool, so yeah, Spartan uh, races, warrior races, cool. Good, whatever gets your kicks off, that's fun because I really think that the most fun is in those kind of things. I'm not a fan of them, but I can see how people love them a lot and I completely understand why people gravitate towards those things. There might be people that hate mountain biking, hate surfing, hate snowboarding, you know, hate wakeboarding, all that kind of stuff. And I literally love that stuff. That is like my favorite stuff to do. So I feel as if the gym is a catalyst to that sort of lifestyle. And I get where you're coming from, Ronald, because no one has to like it and no one has to love it except for you. If you love it, it's all freaking matters, dude. So anyways, um, what do we got next? We got one more set of that. And then I think I'll be off air. Unless I got a couple questions here, let me know. But yeah, here's the physique today. Nothing crazy. It's pretty lean still. I don't even know what my body fat is. What do you guys think? Take a guess down there. And maybe I'll look at my body fat tomorrow in the gym. As I go in, I don't really like to check my body fat too much unless it's like cutting time or whatever. But what do you guys think? So there we go. The abs look like this. You know, it's a little, little fight clubbish, a little bit. And uh, shoulders like that. What do you guys think I'm at? I'm just curious. You think I'm at 12, 13, 14, 15? Let me know. I'll actually look tomorrow in the gym. And they have a pretty awesome machine that sends these electrical shocks through your body. You have to hold these things and I go in dry with no water in my body, so there's no weird things offsetting the conductivity of the water, I mean, of the electrical current, and I do everything the way they say it. So we'll see. I'd be happy with anything less than 15, I guess. But then again, it's bulking season. I'm not going to be super picky about it. But I don't encourage everybody to bulk. Certain people should bulk. Not everybody. All right, here we go. It's not even hard. It's just... I like to get my mind ready so I know like it's gonna pay off, you know. I mean, the worst thing in the thing, the worst thing in the gym to do 
is to be preoccupied with something else outside of the workout. And that could be, you know, your partner. That can be a bazillion different things. But don't let that stuff ruin your workout. If you're going to be in the gym for an hour, hour and a half, stay focused, okay? The only thing you should be on your phone doing, the only thing you should be doing on your phone is updating some sort of a sheet or a Google Doc, which is what I use. I've been using it forever. And I record all my weights that I use and the rep ranges that I use, all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're wondering, like, holy crap, that'd be really sweet to have that thing, trust me, I'll be working on a product soon, something cool. And I'm going to really make it a good one. Trust me. You guys are going to love it. It's going to show you all kinds of different variations of things, and it's going to keep all the nice fundamental things that should be in a workout in a workout week. And it's going to give you some other random stuff, too, on the side. <coughs> so, man, front raises are a lot of fun. I haven't done them in a while. But I definitely want to start doing them again and again and again. Now, here's one thing uh, that I want to cap off this broadcast with. And that is injuries, right? Remember how I said earlier, I've had one real gym injury um, that happened relatively recently. I mean, in the past two, maybe three years. I say that recently because I've been working out for 20 plus years. So when you look at that on the grand you know, scale, three years is quite recent. Um, inadequate warming up, a uh, compressed day to where I was like, I got to get this workout done in like 45 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, nobody in the gym, so it's like I got to hype myself up. So a cold day, compressed workout, nobody in the gym, so it's not even hype. And then uh, I didn't warm up properly on a squat. So I go into a five by five. On the very first set of five, I think I was only working with like 245 or something like that. Um, I don't want to build huge legs. That's just uh, people that know me know about that. Like I don't want to build enormously large legs. I think it's just weird. It's a weird look after a while. And, if you want to fit into some really cool, stylish looking stuff, it's just, it really messes up the look quite significantly. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I went down for my first set of five at about set, I mean, about rep number three, felt shooting pain in my back and just hadn't warmed up properly. And the worst thing about it, the worst thing, I continued with the five by five, ignoring the pain, you know, working through it. And uh, yeah, I paid big for that one. That was hard to even get in the car after that one. And I had to go to a chiropractor for like two or three months after that. So, you know, going back to my original statement, if you're going to be in the gym, focus on the gym, do your warm ups, just like you saw me doing the hanging thing here. Do your warm ups. Don't mess around. If you want to be in this thing for the long term, do your warm ups. Okay. Um, what's the last thing I wanted to cap it off with? Um, there was one last thing I wanted to talk about, but it really kind of eludes me at this point. Anyways, if there are any questions, let me know. And I'll definitely uh, try to answer them. We have seven viewers in the house. I'm going to stick around for one more question. And uh, if you like these kind of workouts, just improv kind of things, I mean, I'm just going like right off the cuff here. I'm like, I'm not even practice for anything. The gym looks okay. So I just did a workout right now, you know, like some simple things. But if you like these kind of things, let me know. Um, I definitely plan on building a badass physique uh, for next year, like super awesome. That's the reason why I'm bulking right now to get a little bit more of my frame. So when I come down to 9% body fat or maybe eight, that it's just going to look ridiculous. But that's just something that I want to do. It makes me happy and it's attainable and it's not sacrificing much. So I don't feel as if I'm more prone to injury. Um, if I get down to 8% body fats, you know, but when you get down to seven, six, maybe even eight, it might be heightened. So you have to be careful with that. Um, yeah, I always urge people to go for the long haul okay it's never fun to go for the long haul but if you want to get the most aesthetic body you've got to get your form down your nutrition down everything and it's gonna be boring for a while okay because you're gonna seem like you're gonna feel like you just want to like bench press a bunch of weight and you're gonna feel like you want to squat a bunch but you got to dial all this stuff in because if you don't go for the long run you're gonna get hurt in the short term get discouraged and each time you get hurt the discourage you'll 100% think like I got to avoid all that. Like when I when I got injured with squatting, I was like, I got to stay away from the squat machine, all this kind of stuff until one day I realized like this is dumb. Like I acknowledged what went wrong and I rebuilt my squat. You know, it's, it's still not that great or anything, but it's good. It's good enough. So anyways, um, that's pretty much the video. If you guys have any 
more questions, I want you to find me at BotDam on Instagram. Also, I want you to comment on this video if you found some sort of value. Maybe you learned a tip or two. And like I said, if you like these kind of improv videos, then hit the like button. Let me know in the comments. But find me on Instagram. I definitely want to blow up my Instagram and have some fun with it. So, uh, you know, send me little things behind the scenes or whatever. But I want to see you guys working out. I want to see you guys having fun. And I want to see you guys living an active, healthy lifestyle. I say that at the beginning of all my videos. And I sincerely mean it. Um, that's the only way to really live. If you can master that, okay, if you can master a body that's half as good as this, for example, if you can, you're going to realize that a lot of other parts of your life are going to change. It's going to be the weirdest thing, you know, um, if you're on the hunt for love, you're going to find that that's going to change significantly. If you're going to be on the hunt for more money or a better job, you're going to realize like things are changing and it's not because you're putting in hard work in the gym. I mean, you're putting that hard work in the gym. It's because you carry more confidence because you're in for the long haul and you realize what is possible, all right? So just remember, I want you guys to get out there and I want you to crush it and I want you to have fun with it, but just understand that it's a journey. And if you do the journey correctly, you'll be someone like me and uh, you'll be way down the road, you know, and still looking fit. And that's all I really, really care about is to spread this message, you know, but get out there, get fit, have some fun. All right, and I'll see you on the next Bod Damn video, guys. Um, you know where to find me if you have any questions. Take it easy. Goodbye.